Hey guys, in this video I will show you 5 lesser known pandas features. These features are great for data analysis and can make your life easier. Ok, and without further ado, let us get started. As a first step, let me import pandas. With that in place, I will load the demo dataset to show you the different pandas features. This example dataset contains information about the total bill, the tip size, additional information about the customer and the day and time of the customer's visit. So we are going to use this dataset throughout the video. Whenever I deal with a new dataset, I often use the describe method to get a quick overview of the data. The output will look like this. But did you know that you can also use include all? In that case, pandas will also include non-numerical values. This overview lets you quickly see the number of unique values per column and the most frequent ones. For example, in our dataset, out of 244 customers, 151 were non-smoking. In addition to the describe method, I also often use nUnique, which will return the number of distinct elements. With that, we can get a quick summary of the distinct values per column. The next feature that might not be that obvious is that you can change the default plotting engine. Perhaps you know already that you can use the build and plotting capabilities of pandas. In my example, I'm grouping the tips by day and sorting the values. With that in place, I can simply use dot plot and specify the kind of chart. If you run this line, pandas will generate a matplotlib chart. This is already pretty useful. Yet, just looking at this chart, it is hard to tell the exact sum of the tips for the respective days. That is why, most of the time, I set the default plotting engine to Plotly. To do so, you just need to add this line of code. When I now rerun the same code, pandas will generate an interactive chart. And this is super helpful because now I can hover over the graph and see the exact values for each day. And with that, let us move on to the next feature. Within pandas, there is a where function available. The where function will replace values if the condition is false. Let me show you an example so that it becomes clearer. Let us say in our data frame, we want to replace the values where the tip size is below $2. To do this, we can use where followed by our condition. When you run this cell, pandas will replace all values that do not meet this criterion with NAN. Instead of NAN, you could also define any other values. For instance, let me calculate the average tip size. Afterwards, I will plug this number into the where function. All values that are not higher or equal than the average should be replaced by below average. As I do not want to overwrite the initial data frame, I have created a copy. We can now see that the first two values inside the tips column got replaced. Instead of creating a copy of the data frame, you could have also set in place to true. In that case, you would apply the changes directly to the data frame. The pandas where function is already pretty handy. Yet I often found myself using the numpy where function, which is very similar to an Excel if else statement. Let me give you an example. Let us say for our data frame, we want to add one more column to indicate if the day of the customer's visit was on a weekday or during the weekend. First, I will import numpy as np. Afterwards, I use np.where followed by the condition. For this example, I want to check if the day is either Saturday or Sunday. If that is the case, I will write true in the new column. Otherwise, it should be false. After running the cell, our new data frame looks like this. And with that, let us move on to the last tip I have for you. When analyzing your data, you might not care about the styling of your data frame. Yet, perhaps you want to show your findings to your colleagues or stakeholders at some point. To do so, you could create a separate function to apply some quick styling. Within this function, I have set a caption, formatted the numbers of the total bill, tips and size column, applied a heat map to the total bill and tips column, changed the table header styling, hidden two columns, and included a bar indicator in the size column. There is actually a lot more you could customize. But for now, let me run this cell. With our function in place, we can apply it to our data frame using dot style and pipe. The result looks like this. The neat thing about this is that the actual data frame has not changed, 
so if you run df.head, pandas will return the initial data frame. But now you have an easy way to apply some styling to your data frame quickly or remove some unwanted columns. As I said, this might be helpful if you want to present the data to someone. Yet you might ask yourself if pandas will also apply the format if you export this data frame to an Excel spreadsheet. And the answer is unfortunately no. So when I export the styled data frame and open the spreadsheet, it looks like this. Only the heat map for the columns got preserved. If you want to style your Excel export, you could use a style frame package. In this tutorial, I will not explain the following lines of code in detail. I just wanted to include it here so that you can see what could be possible. And that said, if you want a full tutorial on the style frame package, then let me know in the comments. For this example, I have changed the header style, added some colors to the is weekend column, changed the column width, font family, added a filter and froze the Excel pane. So let me show you what the output would look like. When I run this cell and go back to my folder, we will have our new Excel file. The exported sheet looks like this. We now have a filter already applied. And as you can see, the false and true values are already formatted. Okay guys, and that is all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, you might also like my other video where I shared my four favorite pandas tips. You can find a link to that video in the info card above and in the description below. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.